This is Jakarta, a very big city with lots of highways and not enough trains. If you live far away from a train station, like me, you need to use buses. Unfortunately, it was here I also realized that most regular Trans Jabodetabek lines are getting D or E tier for all the same reasons. So I'll just tell you what's wrong with them now before I tell you the small details later on that make some worse than others. In order to give some constructive criticism, later at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you an S tier regional bus network from abroad that I have used that all Trans Jabodetabek lines here can learn from. First is combining long headways with no bus tracking. Trans Jakarta says that non BRT lines run every 15 to 30 minutes. That's a huge range. 15 minutes without bus tracking is fine. Telling people to wait for a 30 minute bus without tracking is a sin. Like okay, sometime last year, I remember going home. I was waiting in Gebeka bus shelter for the T11 when an old lady just came to me and complained about how the bus runs every half an hour. Like I feel bad for these people. Like not everyone who uses public transport is a physically healthy 20 year old but might be mildly annoying for me. Could be more serious and exhausting for others. And yes, most of the time, outside of peak hours, the bus comes every 20 to 30 minutes. Speaking of tracking, Traffy uh, departed two years ago, Move it stopped working two months ago, and TJ only works near a BRT shelter, which is a problem because trans Jabodetabek buses by their very nature go well beyond the BRT infrastructure. And even then, it only works half the time. Regular bus networks in other smaller Indonesian cities and even Jakarta satellite cities and even car-centric real estate developers like BSD can provide functional bus tracking, but the world's longest BRT system can't. Second is the recent metro transification, or the locals would call it low dekisasi, aka using low floor buses in a high floor BRT system. I'll start with the good. Compared to the old rattly single door buses, these low floor buses have two street level doors for faster boarding, they have colder ACs, more seats, and are overall quite comfy to be in. The downside is that in order to transit, you need to tap out of the bus and then tap in again at the BRC shelter. You basically pay twice. I only consider that to be the fifth biggest problem. The other issue is that transiting now involves going in or out of the BRT shelter, aka climbing up and down the height of a two-story building just to transfer. You lose the benefits of interlining, for example, if you want to go from Tanjung Duren to Jelambar, previously you can take the 3F, the 8, or the S11. Therefore, you can just go inside the shelter and get on whatever arrives first. Now you need to commit to either being inside or outside the shelter and hope you're lucky. You lose weather and crime protection. Since you wait outside of the shelter, best case scenario, you have a giant LRT station above you. Worst case scenario, you wait under a bridge with four lanes of traffic zooming past you. You can't even check your phone without risking some guy on a motorcycle snatching it from your hands. And the worst part is that you get stuck in traffic. To be fair, I can think of two places where I'd rather be outside the BRT shelter than inside. That is Tanjung Duren, since that shelter can get so crowded you can't get in, and Lebak Bulu, since the BRT shelter occasionally gets swamped with corridor 8 buses so you sort of have to wait in line. Outside of Jakarta, the bus stops tend to be horrible places to be. Standing less than 2 meters away from heavy traffic on a narrow sidewalk on a dusty polluted road in 30 degrees Celsius heat. Best case scenario, you get a decent bus shelter. Worst case scenario, you get zero protection from the elements. Anyway, here's all the lines I've tried. The B11, S11, and T11 have a history of running every half an hour off peak. What I've noticed is that nobody really knows how frequent the buses are exactly. It might be every 20 minutes off peak today, but it could be every 30 minutes tomorrow. The B11 has relatively decent bus stops being under an LRT station and ending in the mall, so it gets deep here. It also doesn't lose all that much in terms of speed after the fleet change since there isn't really much dedicated bus lanes from BNN all the way to Sumarakon Bekasi to begin with. Not so fun fact, but this line used to reach Tosari. This line basically lost half of its length over the years. The same can't be said for the S11, which stops in the congested 6-lane, no sidewalk mess that is Serpong Raya. This line also loses a bit of speed after the fleet change because previously it can use corridor 9 and 3's bus lanes. This line also used to end in BSD terminal, which is great because that's near to where people actually live. Now it stops beside an abandoned supermarket far away from anyone's homes. The service alone gets D tier, but the horrible bus stop drops this down to E tier. The T11 has very high frequencies at peak hours, though due to severe bus bunching, the T11 service from Jakarta is a bit unpredictable. That was before they shortened this line to Batambora though, so this information is slightly outdated. Last time I wrote it, it seems to have increased off-peak frequencies to every 20 minutes, but I don't know if this is gonna stay there or return to once every half hour service. The problem is that there are plans to metro transify this line, making passengers lose access to the new sleepy Petamburan bus shelter. If they continue with metro transification, I'll review this line again along with the T12, which will finally get all day service in April. C tier for now, but if they proceed with metro transification, 
without compensating with higher frequencies or bus stop renovations, this line could drop to D tier. The D21 has better frequencies, so it gets C tier. I've been in that stretch of road multiple times and I saw a lot of D21 buses. Also, it uses nice low floor electric buses. The S21 and S22 seem to be capped at every 20 minutes for now. And so far, it still uses those rattly single door buses. But because these two have the queuing problem in the Bakbulas, they get D tier. I don't think metro transification is the solution though, as doing so will cause this line to lose access to JS Way and its integration with Corridor 1, 13, and the MRT. For non Trans Jakarta regular services, none of which have bus tracking or nice bus stops, Agramasis Chikarang Poris Plawat service gets E tier for long wait times. I wrote that line twice, both times I had to wait for almost half an hour. The old buses have the rather uncomfortable 2 3 seating layout, but the newer buses are some of the nicest buses I've been in. Soft suspension, wide seating, in a 2 2 layout, cold AC, so much so I thought I accidentally boarded an intercity bus. When it comes to prices, at least for the section of line I tried, it costs 25,000 to get from Serpong to Pasarobo. You can pay via cash or GoPay and its alternatives. But I feel bad for this line because Google Maps got this line so wrong it's almost slander. According to Google Maps, Agra Mas buses headed to Polaris do not stop in Veteran when in reality they do. They also got the frequency wrong. Yes, this line's frequency is not great, but it's definitely more than once an hour. My SRS AC34 gets D tier for now. It's basically a more expensive version of Trust Jakarta ST11, but because their routes are exactly the same, if you don't mind paying more, you can use this line if it happens to arrive first. The buses are very old, but they have more seats so most likely you will be able to sit down. I don't know how frequent the buses are though because I only use this line if it arrives before the T11. As far as I know, they only accept cash and the fare is 12,000 rupiah for all distances. I admit, this tier list has been pretty depressing, but it doesn't have to be like this. On the other side of the planet, there's a large city that like Jakarta has an undersized rail network but also has a lot of highways. That's Toronto and they have something called the GO bus. Comfy double-decker buses that provide regional all-day service throughout the Greater Toronto Area with the schedule and live departure times all available in Google Maps. Line 41 provides S-tier weekday service from Hamilton to Pickering with additional service between Square 1 Mississauga and Pickering provided by the 41A. Eastward service to Pickering is frequent in the morning, even more so if you're starting from Square 1 where the 41A also exists and you could be seeing buses every 5 to 10 minutes. Service gradually gets less and less frequent until you're left with once an hour service at night. Meanwhile, westward service to Hamilton is somewhat infrequent in the morning but gradually becomes more frequent in the afternoon before dropping back down to once an hour service at night. Weekend service is handled by the 47 that goes from Hamilton to the Highway 407 bus terminal. The service seems to be mostly every 25 to 30 minutes all day on both directions with hourly service at night. Also S tier. Most stops either have partial or full weather protection, though I guess all of that is out of necessity since they have something called winter there and I heard it's not mild at all. The point is that you can go anytime, any day, you know when the bus is going to arrive and you don't need to stand less than a meter away from 6 lanes of traffic. In part 2, I'll also give you an example of a line that could work great in areas that can support buses every 20 minutes. Trust Jakarta and all the other bus operators must provide functional bus tracking that alone would bump all these lines to C tier. If Trans Jakarta insists on metro transifying lines, they need to compensate by running it at much higher frequencies. I say every 15 minutes off peak and every 5 to 10 minutes at peak hours. The government must also make proper non-BRT shelters with seats, big canopies, tap-in machines, sort of like the non-BRT shelters you see in Sudirman. These shelters must exist both in Jakarta and in the suburban satellite cities. Sarpong Raya's bus shelters definitely need an upgrade. 